Hi and welcome to your next unit. Today we'll be discussing CHC HCS 001, provide home and community support services. So client service delivery plan. The client service delivery plan may include the description of the service and its aims and objectives, a profile or description of the client's needs, any infringement of rights that may be rectified, service activity and steps needed to take, staff responsible for the various activities, resources required, and evaluation strategies and contingency plans. Equipment that may be needed. So these types of equipment are needed to assist and support our clients in the community. They could include anything from your mobility aids, toileting aids and adaptions. These could be rails that are being adapted into the bathrooms medical or pharmaceutical supplies and equipment. This could be things like Webster packs, short-term oxygen supply, basic toiletries and transport. Community support services. So the community support services are a wide range of services and these things could include supported living, day services, outreach or respite and preparation for employment. Identification with clients. So before you enter somebody's home or their premises, they have the right to see your official identification that's been issued to you by the organisation of where you work. You should carry a Pritchard ID with you that shows the organisation you work for and your job title. This ID is usually attached to your uniform and hangs around your neck by a lanyard. So here we're going to talk about consent. So there's two types of consent. There's implied. So the client follows instructions of the healthcare professional. The other type of consent is explicit consent. The client states agreement, which is either verbal or written with the organization. So possible safety issues. So you suspect the medication needs to be amended. What you need to do here is you need to go to your supervisor and inform him or her of your concerns with the medication. Faulty equipment or lack of appropriate equipment to carry out your role. So for an example, this could be hoists or slide sheets. There could be a change in condition for your client and they could have declined in their health and therefore need some extra equipment and aids to assist you to move them around. You are concerned about hazards or near misses. You are concerned about infection control. Your fear for the client's welfare. The environment is dangerous for the client. So this could be anything from they have no heating in their home to there could be a trip hazard with a rug on the floor. Protocols are not being followed. So there is a couple of ways that we can report these issues or concerns. This could be verbally to your supervisor. It can also be in a written documentation that could go in the communication book of the client. It could also be written in an email or a memo to your supervisor or documented down in the maintenance book. Duty of care. So once again, a duty of care is a legal obligation held by yourself to ensure that there is no unforeseeable harm that comes to your client whilst in your care. Dignity of risk. Dignity of risk is about allowing the people that you care for, with or without disabilities, to have their right to make decisions and exercise personal autonomy regarding their own learning, skills and independence and taking calculated risks. Arranging follow-up visits. So you might arrange for a follow-up visit at the end of the session or wait to contact the client at a later point to let the client contact you. You should record any further visits that are needed appropriately. You may also have a formal booking system. Booking procedures. So the amount of notice prior to the appointment, so for example, 24 to 48 hours, the method of making an appointment, so this could be through telephone, it could be in person, or it could be over an email. The duration of the appointment, the cancellation or notice period that needs to be adhered to if the appointment would be cancelled, and the complaints. This is to outline how they can make a complaint for that particular procedure. So once again, once you've gone through your PowerPoint presentation and your learner guide, you're going to come to a series of questions that you are required to answer. This includes your skills activity, your knowledge activity and your performance evidence. If at any time you're experiencing any difficulty with these questions, please feel free to contact your trainer directly as we are more than happy to assist you in any way possible. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.